global happenings today. We communicate. We analyze global news. Stay tuned. Back to global happenings today YouTube channel. Some few months back, uh, the government of Tinubu did mention the issue of Lagos Calabar Super uh, Highway, Coastal Highway. Of course, it was greeted with different reactions. The likes of Peter Bay believed that it was one big project that shouldn't be used right now, shouldn't be embarked on right now, but we should use it for other things. Of course, many things went under the under the waters. The likes of um, some companies, some properties in the coastal area of Lagos State was brought down, demolished. And of course, some indigents also cried out that their ancestral land is about to go down. But right now, something is brewing that is making Nigerians ask questions. That what is going on? Is this a deliberate target of some persons? You're going to find out as David Umahi you know, discloses some issues. Now, before we do that, my colleague is in the house. Kindly subscribe to our channel by clicking on the red subscribe button beside it. You see bell notification icon. Please go ahead. Click on it to get notified as soon as you update the channel on YouTube. Now, the federal government of Nigeria has announced its decision to, um, to disembark from the proposed Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway realignment. Hmm. This was disclosed at the third stakeholders meeting in Lagos where the Minister of um, where the Minister of Works, Dave Umahi, confirmed that the proposed diversion will no longer occur due to the submarine cables along the coast, coastline. Now, Umahi also announced that the Environmental Impact Assessment, EIA, would not be available for now, citing Section 15, Subsection B of the Freedom of Information Act to support the government decision to withhold certain information from the press and public. The section Umai cited is the ex exemption of third-party information which allows government institutions to deny journalists or public access to information. Meanwhile, the announcement comes after the telecommunication companies warned the government of the possibility of network outage in the country if the diversion is not reconsidered. The government has since decided not to proceed with the diversion, which would affect connectivity to the internet in the country and lead to the demolition of accessory homes in Ogun, Okun Aja community. In a video, of course, posted by one of the members of the Okun Aja community, we have seen President Tinubu led administration for his decision not to use the route, despite previous demolitions that affect, affected the beach front of private businesses including landmark the government is now considering alternatives to ensure the continuation of the Lagos calabar coastal highway but the question now is why is it that they're able to consider this and they were not able to consider uh, the private businesses of um, of landmark and the rest that was demolished interestingly the minister of works also Yesterday in Lagos, while interacting with the, the stakeholders, uh, open up that the uh, that seven hundred and fifty homes situated in the vicinity of Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway are designated for removal. And for me, that is really huge. Like the uh, environmental impact assessment, which has not been carried out. Uh, I, I mean, that is pointing to one direction. Even that environmental impact assessment, we know that it reveals the consequences of a particular project on, you know, businesses and everything. So I, I believe that if that was taken into consideration, most of the steps that they are taking wouldn't have been taken. And that's why journalists were very insistent for them to bring out that particular document so that Nigerians can peruse through it and know what is the benefit of this so-called coastal road compared to the damage it's going to do to Nigerian people and even to the economy of the country? Now, but the question now is, this same issue of EIA, that's Environmental Impact Assessment, I could still remember that one of the Arise journalists asked during the press release, said, did you at any time undergo any EIA, that's Environmental Impact Assessment, and if there is, if there was, can we see the document? He said, yes. They did, duly approved and all. And now that's the same now impact assessment we are getting to hear now that I say um a day to this they want to make it public. It could just just my personal opinion, it could be that it was hurriedly carried out and having embarked on it already, going going back to Lusa said they were unprepared. So they're trying to manage the situation. And this fire began approach will not help us at all. Well for me I, I personally believe that it may have been carried out 
but when you look at the negative impact of the, of the project on Nigerians, people will scream. Because it makes no sense for you to think that you are doing Nigerians good and at the end of the day, they are going to lose a lot of things. It's going to affect business. It's going to affect telecommunication. It's going to affect many other things. I believe they have done it, but they do not want to show it to Nigerian public because if they show, there will be an uproar which um, may stop the progress of you know the business but interestingly i've been wondering looking at you know the model uh, looking at the road itself uh, noticing that uh, uh um, are you telling nigerians that they're going to be using you know concrete and cement to do it and someone is like or oh, people are like man how can you be thinking of pushing in how much billions into a project and you're using concrete and cement to do i've never heard it in any place in the world at least uh, to show you that it's not going to really all go well if those materials are being used. Getting back to what what he did in his uh, state, it was noticed that a lot of such this thing has damaged people's tires, you know, damaged people's car, and it's not long lasting. How then should the middle government be thinking of spending so much in a project that you know that if after eight years it uh, it is noticed that it is destroying people's uh, cars? A lot of people may not want to pass through that road, and that means that that particular project is gone. So I, I feel that this should be uh, a retrospect. The government should look deep into the project, apart from the consequences it has. Even the material used, the design and everything should be made public so that people who are professionals can advise. If we have a town hall meeting on, in respect to this uh, project, it will help a great deal. He is uh, an engineer or whatever he is. He, 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 has, he, he has the way without it. He has knowledge. You know about a lot of things, but guess what? Single-handedly proposing something like this and working uh, all alone to make it happen for me, it's not fair. Bring it, let Nigerians look at it. People who are more experienced than him will talk, you know, and they will help out in this situation. Well, of course, um, some Nigerians are thinking differently. You know, we have d different opinions on this matter. Some believe that uh, it's a different narrative at all. That uh, it's a case of there's some certain persons they were targeting their businesses and they have achieved it, so they are now slow pedaling. I'm taking one or two reactions. This one here says it's telling uh, Nigeria in general that in the future the narrative will be that Minister of Works Engineer David Umahi from the Southeast Nigeria and not the federal government demolished landmark beach and resort owned by Akpo Umanibi Umunai Nibi from Southeast Nigeria and Britain. For the, purpose, for the purpose of creating a coastal road, which was questioned by the entire country over the necessity and location of that road and the implications on demolition of tourist attraction, a tourist attraction center worth millions of dollars without an EIA, that's Environmental Impact Assessment, only to eventually say the project will be disembarked as alleged above due to unknown submarine cab cables that should have been identified and stated in the EIA demanded by the public previously. Somebody say welcome to Nigeria. Now, if truly this is the case, and then now they are diverting look for another route out, then if they had done the proper thing, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have any need really to demolish any of those properties that have been demolished now. Where are they going to be? Is it, not, is it going to be abandoned? A whole lot of questions. That's what Nigeria is asking. Are you sure the EIA was conducted before now? Uh, it's quite worrisome because most of the predictions of Nigerian seems to be true right now. Someone came out and predicted that, you see this project that they are hiding a lot of things from the public. That very soon, they would demolish, especially that landmark stuff, uh, guy's place, that the intention was to demolish it at the end of the day. They will sell back those lands to people that they feel like selling it to. But I feel that the federal government should prove the people wrong by continuing with this project and making sure that the quality of things used in carrying out this project are superb. Because if at the end of the day you, you know, frustrate this guy out of business and he has moved on only to come back to see how beautiful this road will be through his business place and notice that that same place has been sold out to other people, then the agenda was actually not the robot to take those things out of him fronting an evil man. However, that's what we like to leave it.